got up Tuesday morning fixing to go to work and stuff went to changing. I grabbed my Bible and throwed it in the car and told Sweetie, I said, uh oh, uh oh, it's changing now. So I got to work and run in the park a lot and flipped over there and read these same scriptures again. And the Lord was changing my thought on these scriptures. You can't exhaust the Word of God. So He changed my thought on what I'd read. So I was all day when I was working and preaching to myself, Lord preaching to me, making notes. Then the challenge was when I got home, cipher them things out and line them up. But anyway, you'll get what God gives me tonight. I wrote down a few notes and scribbled some things, but uh, I want us to uh, uh, take heed to what the Bible says here. Second Corinthians chapter number three, verse number one. Paul says, do we be, uh, begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendations to you or letters of commendations from you? Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. We'll quit reading right there. We might get a couple of other verses here in just a little bit. Uh, and I've, I've, uh, the devil said, well, you've preached on this before. And I said, probably have. Amen. But anyway, uh, he stowed that at me, uh, especially when I first started preaching. He said, you've done preached on that once, and you need to find something else. And, I'm, and uh, I was uh, brought up the old-fashioned way of whatever God lays on my heart, I'm going to read that. And God will give us what we need. We're going to go to the house here in a few minutes. Uh, but this is the thought out of this. He said there in verse number 2, You are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. This is a question I want to ask you. I want you to ask yourself. I ask myself. Amen. We're an epistle. Amen. Written, known and read of all men. Uh, my question to you, my question to me is, what does my book say? We're writing a book. You ever had somebody go ask them two or three questions and they kind of smart and say, what are you writing a book? Yes, you are, by the way. Amen. We're writing a book. Amen. Every day of our life, we're writing a book. And I want to get into that with just a little bit uh, with the help of God here just in a minute. But I had to look some of these words up that uh, the Lord throwed, up, throwed at me. So uh, uh, anybody know what an autobiography is? What is it? All right, that's what you write about yourself. What about a biography? There you go, man. Y'all got this. I mean, I had to look all that up, but that's all right. Amen. And so there's two, two kinds of books. The one you want to write about yourself, and then there's one that other people's going to write about you. Sometimes they write it after you kick a bucket. Sometimes they write it while you're alive. Amen. But what are they reading? What does your book say? Now, uh, just to be honest with you, if old Tim had to write a book about Tim, it wouldn't be too long. But there's probably some stuff that I'd write that, uh, or I'd leave out. Let me put it that way that I wouldn't write in my book if I'm writing about me. You don't need to know it. Huh? Is that right? Now you take somebody writing one of them biographies that's been watching me, amen, and, and, and you know, dealing with me and go and doing some looking back and tracing back and all, uh, they might write something different. But I'm still writing a book. Amen. <coughs> There's two ways to write a book. Fiction and nonfiction. Right? Or true or false. Or false or true. Whatever you want to do. Amen. Is that right? right. Amen. We hear books now, oh, that that wasn't right, and that wasn't right, and that was well, that was a lie, and everybody gets all been out of shape because that wasn't right, and that wasn't right. Well, let me say there's one book written, amen, that's right. God is keeping a record, and God is writing some stuff down. Amen. Now, what he writes down is right. Amen. Y'all help me out here. We're going to get into it just a little bit. But I, I thought about this, about the autobiography. Amen. A story that one writes uh, about their own self or their own life. Amen. This verse comes to my mind. 
Romans 12, 3. Part of that verse says to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. In other words, I'm writing my book. I, be careful, amen. I put it like this, like Mama always said, don't get too big for your britches. Amen. amen. She had a way of kind of reminding me of that every now and then when I thought, you know, I know more than she did, or I this or that, you know, and I said, you know, oh no, huh? don't get too big for your britches. There's a way, amen, to get humbled. Amen. Some of y'all been there. Amen. It's all right. Amen. Some of you young people said, I don't know what he's talking about. Amen. Amen. You take a trip to the woodshed, you'll remember it. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Oh, me. Amen. But hey, uh, 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 don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. It's all right to, amen, pat other folk on the back, and it's all right if they pat you on the back. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, amen, don't be a, a, a strutting young stuff and out there crowing like a bainy rooster, amen, what you've done. No, I'll get into that in a little while, but it's what God's done. That's why we sung near the cross. You can stay near the cross. Everything you do will be for the glory of God. He'll get the glory out of it, amen? And he ought to get the glory out of it. And then I thought about not only the autobiography, but I thought about the biography, amen? That somebody is writing about me or somebody writing about you, amen? Not myself writing about me. This is the verse that comes to my mind. And again, I'm scribbling these notes down, amen, while I'm trying to work and get my pen out and a scrappy piece of paper. But we made it, amen, thank God. But, amen, this verse comes to my mind. But Matthew 5, 16, most of you know this. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What do you want your book to say, amen? What's your book saying? Are you writing a book? Every day of your life I look at it as like, hey amen. Or every, I just, let me just say, as I was thinking about this, I thought, okay, every year of my life since I've been born, I wrote a book. Right. Not knowing it. Why, why do you say that? Well, it says there in verse number three, it's not written, amen, on tablets of stone. It's written in the flat on your fleshly heart. What are you saying there, uh, Brother Tim? Well, it's talking about this epistle, and I just I looked up the meaning of that. Most of y'all probably know the meaning of that, but uh, the word epistle means a written message. So we're sending the message every day that we live. Good or bad? You're sending the message, but you're sending it, amen, to somebody's heart. You're not writing it down on paper. What does that mean? <laughs> I just looked at it like this. As I was thinking on this and trying to study this, amen, amen, what you're doing has an effect on me, and what I'm doing has an effect on you or somebody around you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's, they're taking it to heart. You're not writing it on a piece of paper and handing it to them because a lot of people wouldn't even read it anyhow probably. They look at it toward the trash. You're, they're writing, you're writing your book on people's heart. Ain't that what it says in verse 3? Yeah. Written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. What you do and what I do has effect on people around us. What are we saying to them? You say, well, I'm not even talking to them. What are you saying to them? <laughs> You've heard the statement. It's true. It's true. It's true. You'll be the only Bible some people ever read. Amen. Amen. Don't forget that. Amen. Don't forget that. Amen. So what are you saying? Amen. What are, what are they reading <coughs> in our life? What are they seeing? What kind of message are we sending? Amen. Amen. Something to think about. Is it not? And I thought about, all right, you know, uh, the Lord's let me stay on this earth a little over uh, 63 years. I got 63 chapters. Amen. 
Some of them I didn't know about. Amen. Some I've been I've been told about. That's where that biography comes in. That, yeah, when you was little, you done this and you done that. And I said, No, nah, I don't believe it did. I don't remember it. Amen. Amen. But then to get older, and it's like, mm -hmm. remember when you done this? Oh yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then you get a little older and say, I, I really hate I done that. But there's one good thing about some of those chapters that I wrote. I can put it under the blood. Amen. And the king of all kings will not remember it. It's under the blood. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. You go to a class reunion and what they talk about. Your buddies. Remember when we threw them rocks through that window? Broke that window out, tore that car up. Remember when we skipped out, went fishing? They talk about most of the time. They talk about the mean stuff you got into, huh? Is that right? Yeah. They don't say, "Hey, remember when we went to church and had revival?" No, they don't talk about that. Right. It's like, man, you broke this out. You done this. You done it. Got a hot rod car and burnt the tires off there in the parking lot. And I don't know what you know what I mean. That's all they talk about. The meanness you get into. Hey, Amen. But it says this. Think on this thought. What does my book say? It says this down in the last part of verse number two. Talking about our epistle written in our hearts. Uh, this kind of got me to thinking and we're going to cover a few verses, look up a couple verses in the scripture and we'll be done. It says it's known and read of what? That little word in there. A-double-L. -L. Huh? People's are looking on, and you don't know who's looking on. I made mention here before, and my mama always, I mean, she drilled in, in me, and I just, I mean, I was probably 10, 12 years old, you know, maybe starting to be a teenager, and uh, down home, going downstairs, Sunday school class, and come up, and my mama pulled me aside one day, and she said, you watch what you do, boy. These people are watching you. She said, them little ones is a watching you. And of course I thought, yeah, right. Ain't nobody paying no attention to me. You know, that's what I thought. Right. The next Sunday, the next Sunday, come up from downstairs from Sunday school class fixing to get settled in for preaching because my, my spot was on the second bench. That's where my mama told me to sit. That's as far back as I can sit, the second bench where she can see me, amen, that's what she said. And, but anyway, I was coming to get in my spot, amen, I know where to sit, after we got out of the choir, I know where to sit, amen. When I sung in the choir, I stood right beside the mom. Why'd you do that? Cause that's what mom told me to do. Cause she know if I stood over with my buddies, she's gonna have to come over there and get me, or take and do like this, and I better be a moving. And most of the time it was a loop. It went to the outside and then back inside. Of course, everybody knows what was going to happen when it went outside. Right. And then it come back inside. Amen. That's a whole nother. That's one of them you need to get race him pages in that little book. Amen. But listen, hey, when when little old boy come up from, from Sunday school class and run right up to me. Little old bitty fella, and again, I was about, probably wasn't even a teenager, probably a barely teenager. He said, when I grow up, I want to be just like you, Tim. The words that my mama spoke hit me right between the eyes. Somebody's watching me. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Somebody's watching. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's keeping an eye on you. See how you handle some stuff. See what you do. Watch the situation you're in. They, they're watching you. Right. They're reading your book. You're writing a book, they're reading it. Amen. Amen. It says, so we're known and read of all men. Let's flip over real quick to Matthew chapter number 12. And we're going to do a couple of scriptures and we're going to be done. Matthew chapter 12. <laughs> Let's see what it says here about being known and read of all men. And uh, 
Again, uh, uh, the Lord just worked over, worked me over on a lot of this, Amen. And uh, I'm still, Amen, uh, sore from getting whippings. But anyway, thank God for it. Uh, he says it'll do us good, and it will, Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter number twelve, verse number thirty-three, Amen. Here, here it is. Uh, uh, what Matthew wrote about you and I, and and others. It said there, by uh, Matthew twelve thirty-three. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. That's pretty plain, ain't it? Right. Hey Amen. You understand that? Hey Amen. You either got a good tree or bad tree. You got good fruit or bad fruit. Hey Amen. Anybody ever have one of the old apple trees? You got them little old knotty apples and wormy and everything as hard as a bullet. Hey Amen. For nothing, deer wouldn't hardly eat them. <laughs> but now you get one of them trees, you got them big old golden delicious are hanging on it. Hey Amen. Red delicious, something like that. Hey Amen. Some of them good and juice are flying everywhere and you bite into it. You say, hey, yeah, yeah, take care of that, and, amen, take care of that. And it said, old generation of vipers, how can ye be an evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. I don't understand that. Right. You understand that? I don't understand that. Yeah. Hey Amen. What they reading out of you? Well, the evil man is going to be reading stuff evil. Right. The good man is going to be reading some good stuff. Right. Hey Amen. Now you might fool some of them some of the time. But you ain't going to fool all of them all the time. But I say unto you, listen, that every what? Idle. Idle word. Idle word. I mean you ain't in gear. Right? I just put it like this when I read across that. That means your mouth ain't in gear. It's what you do. You see that? Every idle word. When I put my put my put my car, start my car, leave it in park and it's idling and it ain't going nowhere. Huh? But I'm in the car and it's running. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words Thou shalt be condemned. What's my book saying? What are they reading out of me? What are they reading out of you? Huh? Day in, day out, what are they reading? Huh? What are they reading out of us? <clears throat> I wrote down a couple of verses, and then we're going to go over, we're going to back up into 1 Corinthians here just in a minute. As I thought on that, about the evil tree and the good tree, and then them idle words. That means I'm not saying nothing, I'm doing something. What they're reading out of me. Huh? What they're reading out of me. 1 Corinthians 11, 28 says, But let a man examine himself. Matthew 26, 41, it says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. It says, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the spirit there is a little less. That means my being, me. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit there. The spirit about me. If I'm mad, I got a mad spirit about me. If I'm aggravated, you probably go, Lord, I got an aggravated spirit about me. Huh? You ever walk up to somebody and you've been and then just they just they just mad. You say, ooh, they they something made them mad. They they's mad about something. They got an ill spirit about them. That's what that's talking about. Hey Amen. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. I 
want to write a good book, do you? Huh? I want to write a good book. I want folk, amen, to see that I love the Lord. I want them to see that I serve the Lord, amen. I want them to see good things. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. That's not an excuse to sin. That's just saying, hey, you need to depend on the Lord. He will help us. <coughs> James 4.10 says, Humble yourself, therefore, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He shall lift you up. I want to flip back uh, real hurriedly, and we're about done. 1 first, first Corinthians 15, verses 9 and 10. Let's see what Paul had to say here. Some folks said, well, Paul was, when I, when, when I, I've heard people say, well, Paul was writing something, he acted like he was bragging. No, you're going to see what Paul wrote here and get what Paul's saying here and uh, think of the song near the cross. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 9 and 10. Paul says, for I am the least of the apostles, that I am not me to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Paul said that part of my book ain't good for people to read. I wish I wish that wasn't there. Huh? I wish that wasn't there. And I'll be honest with you, these pages I wish wasn't there in my book. That other people have read. Amen. Or oh me, they just do like this. Amen. Everybody's, amen. We've all sinned, come short of the glory of God. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what the Bible said. But Paul says this in verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Now listen to what he says. He says, But I labor more abundantly. Than they all. Oh, Paul, you 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 about to get into bragging here, ain't you? Paul said, "Look, man, I love the Lord. It's by the grace of God I get to do what I do." And he said, "Hey, I've done dug in, Amen. I've hit the ground wide open." He said, "I've done more. I've labored more than abundantly than the all." But what does he say next? Yet not I. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Paul said, it's by the grace of God I'm a doing what I'm doing. I'm, you read Paul's letter, he wide open. He, I mean, he's going in jail, out of jail, traveling, preaching, just going, 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 persecuted on top of persecution. He said, I labored more than they all. He wasn't putting them down. He said, look, man, I'm a going at it, but it's by the grace of God I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's by the grace of God we we'll do what we do what we do. By the grace of God we're here tonight. Yeah. Whether you know it or not, it's by the grace of God you're here tonight. There's a many a place you could have been. Thank God you're here tonight. <laughs> not because of me. Because it's church time, amen, be in the house of God. <coughs> but Paul said there, whether it was I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Paul said, man, I'm going at it. And hey, I'm a preaching to you. If you get saved under my preaching, praise the Lord. Or what I'm a doing, praise the Lord. But if not, we're still preaching. <coughs> One verse, and it's kind of my favorite verse. And one I like to try to, <clears throat> uh, I examine myself with this verse a whole lot. Uh, most of you know it, Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm not capable of putting my feet on the floor of the morning. I'm not. 
It's God that helps me do that. And I'm not belittling anybody that can't. Don't, don't take that wrong. Uh, but I understand that it's by the grace of God I can do that. Now, some people would roll out of bed and take off to work. I mean, I, I, I clock goes off, shut the thing off, hit the floor. I'm ready to go. I'm wide open, 100 miles an hour, ready to go as soon as the clock goes off. But my eyeballs fly open, I'm ready to go. Sweetie ain't that way, but I am. I mean, I'm doing, it's, it's time to let her rip, buddy. But it's by the grace of God, I can roll out of that bed and get up. Amen. I know within a split second I could be unable to do that. Huh? Right? But while I'm writing my book, each day that I live, like I said, I'm past 63, so I've got 63 chapters plus working on it. Some of the chapters I like, some of them I don't like. Some of them I'm ashamed of, amen. Some of them I'm proud of. I see where God's grown me, and God's helped me, you know. I'm on, I feel like I'm on the good side of it, you know what I mean? I, I'm still learning, but I'm better in my little head. Again, if I'm writing my book, I'm better than what I was you know, before I just turned it all over to the Lord, let him have it. I'd been saved for a good while, but then the Lord showed me he needed me to give me to him so he could use me. I ain't much, but I want him to use me, whatever it is. Amen. And the best thing you and I can do is just live for him. Just live for him. Just live for Him. Day in, day out, just live for the Lord. Serve the Lord. Live for the Lord. Honor the Lord. He helps you with something, say, praise the Lord. Say, well, they won't like it. Who cares if they like it? Praise the Lord. Amen? I mean, hey, it's by the grace of God I am what I am, Paul said. Paul said, look here, I'm going to preach to you, amen, and I'm going to move it on. But it's God that's helped me do what I've done, amen. Brother Junior, how young are you? How old are you? 78. He got 78 chapters in his book. I ain't going to ask Miss Diane how she is, amen. And there's some of these ladies at 39 home. I'm not asking Sweetie to tell you how old she is. 39 home, amen. I'll fill you in on some pages, amen. Our officials, our epistle is known and read of all men. What does your book say? I ask myself, I'm not judging, I'm asking myself, what does my book say? What's people seeing in me, out of me? What they read out of me? When trials come, when troubles come, when situations happen, I don't know about y'all, they stuff don't always go right at work. Amen? Brother Chip, every day wasn't a wonderful day when you was a police officer, was he? Huh? God got you here. Amen. I, I, I'm going to share it this week. I'm going to shut up. I, was, I got put out, amen, there. Quarter to seven yesterday morning, outside, wind the howling. I had to work outside at work. Man, I'm down on all that wind. I said, Lord, that wind's going to tire my head up. I won't even be able to talk Wednesday night. And I was getting notes and writing and wind the howling. I'm working outside and I'm thinking, Lord, I, I, I sure would like to get in out of this wind sometime. And that's what was on my mind. I just kept it working. I was doing my job. That's what I was sent to do. I was doing my job. So I was out there probably a couple hours. I got a call on my radio. Hey, Tim. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, you need to go to the building and work. I said, praise the Lord. They said, what? I said, praise the Lord. Hung the radio up, took off to the building. There's heat in that building. <laughs> yeah, y'all life. I took that big coat off, that toboggan, the hat on, gloves. I took I said, yeah, thank you, Lord. I thought, well, I'll probably have to face that again today. Guess what? First thing this morning, hey, you need to go to the building and work today. I said, praise the Lord. God done that. Well, that might not mean nothing to you. It mean a whole lot to me. I can talk tonight, amen. You might not like it, but I can talk tonight, amen. That wind tired my head up. What are you saying? Give him glory. People kind of around me kind of looking, like, what, what? And they said, oh, are you supposed to work over today? I said, not today. <laughs> I said, I'm filling in for the pastor. I'm not working over today. Get somebody to fill in. Most of us said, you, you want to preach tonight? I said, yep, Lord willing. I get there, amen. Me or somebody will, amen. I told Brother Tristan up there, he got up here hunting the guitar. I said, hey, Pastor said if you preach tonight. <laughs> he said, what? I said, Pastor said you're preaching, <laughs> preaching tonight. He said, no, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate, appreciate Brother Tristan. All of uh, them boys done wonderful our Sunday night. Amen. They all done good. Praise the Lord. Amen. They all done good. Amen. 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 Expound on the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, what's people reading? Watch people reading. Watch your book say. Huh? Now, I hate, to, I hate to read books other than the Bible. I just don't pick a book up and start reading. I just never did like it, so I don't do it. Amen. I love this book, and I read it. Try to all the time. I'm not bragging on me. I'm just saying this is one I read. And the Lord uh, kind of drilled that in me way back there in my younger days. He said, you got time to read. You need to read that. There ain't nothing wrong with reading other books. Don't get me wrong. Praise the Lord. If you love reading other books, you read other books. Amen. Just don't forget this book. Amen. Back in my day, in some of y'all's days, had them people go out there in the morning and get the newspaper. And that's set high for morning reading that newspaper. And I remember my pastor climbing in the pulpit and said, if you read your Bible half as long as you read that newspaper, said things can change in your life. Uh -huh. And it's like, oh, okay, all right. Now you carry your newspaper around in your hand. It's called cell phone. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, sir. Amen. So the preacher's going to throw this out. If you spend a little more time reading the book and on that telephone, they may might help you. Amen. Amen. Oh, me. I'm just throwing that out there. Amen. Amen. I just thought I'd pitch that out there. Amen. I love you tonight. Thank you for your prayers. Be careful what people read. Let them read the right stuff. Amen. Let them read the right stuff out of your book and out of my book. Amen. 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 Let's stand tonight. I'm done. Let's stand. We're going to be dismissed. Thank you for your prayers tonight. You be careful going home. Amen. You continue to pray for the pastor. He's still preaching uh, out there at the jail. And uh, I'll throw this out. Don't scare nobody. If somebody said they's going to call. He's calling for a big snowstorm coming. And so just let us know. I mean, I can't stop it. Amen. So uh, keep, keep your telephone handy. Amen. Listen for them. As that little boy says, listen for them pronouncements. Amen. Whether they're going to get too deep, you might not have church. So you listen to them pronouncements. Amen. That we don't have it. Amen. Brother William, you dismiss us in a word of prayer, brother.